Andy, thanks for sitting down with me today. We've done this before. This is not a new thing for us, Andy. So my question for you today is, what's the one thing that people don't know that AS ASTA does, and, and why is that important to the seed industry? Well, I think the one thing that always, from the beginning of coming on board with the association, that struck me as truly unique, it's truly special for an association, is the makeup of our board. Where it's one, one company, one vote. It doesn't matter if you're the largest dues payer or the, the, the paying the, the minimal dues, you have the same vote. And you're sitting at the table with, with companies that are, are very vast, uh, global multinationals, and you're sitting out at some that produce uh, maybe specific type of a vegetable seed, but they're equal. And so everyone has input, and that's what makes our board extremely strong and supportive of our activities. And a lot of people are surprised. They think if you pay big dues, you get a lot of votes. Nope. You uh, provide the same support for the association as the person who, who uh, is, is paying that minimal level. Which is unique, as you said, is unique, and that's not the way it is in any other association. It really isn't. It really isn't. But you see bonds and in, in just connections that are made between board members because that reality of we're all in this together really comes down to it. And it's not a competition thing at that point. It's what's best for the industry. And that's why I think ASDA has such good success. So ASDA's mission is to promote research, development, and movement of seed. What do you see as the biggest impediment that you're facing right now, and, and how do you get over that hurdle? Well, I think as we're working forward to reach those goals or initiatives is how do we talk about the breeding industry today, the seed industry today. There is so much that's going into improving varieties to have that good, strong foundation to bring in technology or to develop different production systems, whether it's conventional or organic or biotech. Uh, deal, you know, the seed is the new delivery mechanism for agrochemicals. And so, but you still have to have a strong, vibrant, viable seed that can produce a good crop. You can't put a really good technology or innovation on a seed that has a 50-50 chance of germinating. And so that's really what, how do we communicate to the general public and to the grower community that we're producing the highest quality seed possible every single year. And that's what we're trying to do. You worked with Crop Life in developing the new uh, seed enhancement or seed treatment stewardship guide. Correct. This is a big deal for the industry, and it's a realization that there is some overlap between what Crop Life is working on and what ASTA are working on. Mm -hmm. And you, you said it yourself: seed is the is the vehicle to deliver some of this technology. It has launched to, to huge success. Can you tell us a little bit about where we're at with that program and? And, and why were everyone so excited about it? Well, if you look at the adoption of, of uh, seed treatment technologies over the last 10 or 15 years, we've really come out with some great innovations to be able to really bond that uh, agrochemical, either a, a fungicide or insecticide on there, to replace that in application or that broadcast application that was being made before. And you're doing a lot of other things with that, but we do have to make sure that we're properly stewarding that product and not having any negative impact on the environment or pollinators or other you know, beneficial insects. And so what we decided several years ago is that we need to work with Crop Life America. We have a lot of mutual companies between, between the two associations to develop a guide to help uh, everyone in that process handle treated seed properly, whether they're growers or whether they're seed companies or distributors or, or, or anyone in that, in that chain. We need to be able to continue to use this technology and our goal is to make sure that the regulatory community understands that we respect that and we also realize that we don't need additional regulation on it so that everyone can continue to adopt that technology. Right. Is there any feedback that, you hear, that you've been able to pick up out in the, out in the field? You, I know you're, you're on the road a lot. Right. What kind of feedback are you hearing from the industry as they talk about this new uh, program? Well, the industry really is receptive to it. It's, it's an area that we could use some additional information for seed companies to convey to farmers. What is this, what is on here? What does this mean? What do I need to think about? What happens if a bag breaks and it spills? How do I handle that? Because it is a little different than a, a chemical container or, or a dry chemical bag. So how do you, you know, make sure that you uh, are, be able, are, you are able to communicate that to your, your customer. Um, and the, it's been very well received. The, all the grower groups are on board. We've got all of the major commodity groups on board. And we've already started talking to the vegetable 
side of the vegetable and flower and, uh, and fruit side of the business. So we'll be going out to the West Coast organizations, the East Coast organizations, your, your core vegetable and flower and, and uh, fruit uh, parts of the industry in reaching out to those growers in the next year. Excellent. As evidenced by the, uh, the volume of people who are down here in Chicago this year, uh, ASDA had a, has had a successful run. What do you see in the last 12 months as the biggest success for ASTA? Well, as we look at it, I think really getting on top of the seed treatment issue has been a huge success. We really put some aggressive goals in place, really wanting to get in front of the America's farmers, especially corn farmers and soybean farmers, before planting in 2013. We were able to do that in a three-month period. We got uh, strong support from the National Corn Growers Association, the American Soybean Association, American Farm Bureau Federation, and the National Farmers Union in, th in a three-month period. We got out advertising, we got out uh, promotion, we got out um, uh, educational material, worked at uh, all the major shows. And then this year, we've just built on that pretty dramatically. So in a little over a year, we've had a really huge impact on getting that messaging out there. And addressing some of the concerns that were coming out of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So the continuation of that is, what do you see for the next 12 months, Andy? Well, I think the seed industry is going to continue to be a, a very positive part of the agriculture community. I was on a panel recently and one of the farmers said, you know, I have one chance a year to plant and I'm going to make sure I've got the best seed I can find to put in that ground to make sure I get a good crop. And they're very positive about the innovations that we've seen uh, over the last couple of years. I think there are going to be some challenges in agriculture in general with some of the things we're seeing with ethanol and in the markets and those kind of things. But there are a lot of uh, uh, in areas that are extremely positive for the seed industry. I think innovation is going to continue to drive where we go. Perfect. Thanks again for sitting down with me. I appreciate it. Sean, it's always a pleasure.